Waking up in the morning just sucks. Well, at least it used to. There's nothing worse than having to wake up at eight o'clock in the morning and then you're not a functioning human being until like at least midday. However, over the last few years, I've developed a few habits and a few little strategies so that I can wake up early and start studying immediately. So in this video, I'm gonna give you guys all five habits that I've learned and picked up over the years so that you can start studying more productively in the morning. Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Harry and I'm a wannabe med student in Australia, currently completing my final year of paramedicine. Today, I'm sharing with you five habits that I have implemented into my study routine over the years that has allowed me to study more effectively in the morning and has actually allowed me to do better in my exams. In the video, we're gonna to touch on things like planning ahead, batching your time, and a few others. So stick around, because I think you're gonna get a lot out of it. All right, well, let's get into it. All right, so this one is probably pretty simple, but it's also actually really, really important. And it's about planning out before what you're actually going to study. I find that it kind of prevents you from sitting down, you have all your books out, and then you spend like 15 to 20 minutes trying to figure out, oh, you know, should I, should I do the physiology of the lungs today? Or should I work on, you know, the anatomy of the kidneys? Like, uh, it's so much easier to just know exactly what you're gonna do. So then you can just kind of sit down and do it. Because I've, al I've always found that whenever I have to decide what I wanna actually study on the day, I just end up wasting so much time and I and I can guarantee that it's not gonna be as productive day as it could be. It's good to kind of focus on the little things with this as well. Like, I also find that if I have to like search resources or go on a website on my laptop to actually start studying that day, you know, that then opens you up to a couple more chances for distraction. So if you then have to search something, it then allows you to maybe get distracted by an ad or you might get an order field that sends you down some dark rabbit hole trying to decipher like what the best pH is of your soil to grow tomatoes in summer. It just, if you have it all ready beforehand, then you already know what you're going to do before you even sit down. So you can just sit down and do it. Being selective with your time and actually allocating blocks of your day to get stuff done allows you to be more productive and allows you to get it done in a more timely manner. And this is known as something called Parkinson's law. Basically, it means that work expands to fit the time allocated to it. So if we're gonna give ourselves time to study and we wanna study from say like, you know, eight to 12, if we actually write that down and block it out, we will get as much as we possibly can done within those eight to 12 and it'll be a really good session. Whereas if we just tell ourselves, today I'm gonna to study cardiology and don't give us a clear defined time limit, it'll probably take us twice as long or, and we'll just delay and it'll probably end up taking us all day. I find it also helps to be a bit of a motivator as well. Like if you wake up and then you have to think about when you kind of want to start, you don't really feel prepared, you don't really feel like motivated and ready to get started. Whereas if you wake up and you see that you have it on your calendar to start at eight and you're gonna finish at 10 or 11 or 12 or whatever, you kind of feel a little motivated and go, okay, well I have to be ready to go at eight o'clock because my schedule says so and just kind of helps to keep you a little bit more accountable. Using me for an example is exactly what I do. Every day I wake up at 7.30, every single day. And if I need to study, every single day I need to study, I start studying at eight. And then I won't start studying, and then I won't stop studying until 12 when I have lunch. Now this works incredibly well if you've got other commitments later on in the day and you can't really be flexible with when you want to study. So it allows you, again, following on this accountability to know that you're going to get most of your studying done in that early part of the morning before you have to go and do other commitments during the day, whether it's work or picking up kids from school, those sorts of things. Like most days when I have university, I know I have to leave at 11.40 because it takes me about an hour and a half by the train to get up to Melbourne, which means that if I want to get some study done beforehand, if I have my strict time schedule to get up at 7.30 and then start studying at eight, I can get three and a half hours study in before I've even left to go to uni, which means that I can feel productive and accomplished before my day's even started. Otherwise, you know, I'm getting home at seven o'clock at night from the train and I'm telling myself I'm gonna study, but deep down, deep, deep down, I know I never am. Don't forget guys as well, like and subscribe down the bottom if you're enjoying the video. All right, peace. This is the biggest habit and probably the hardest one to kick and it's get rid of your phone. Just get rid of it. 
We rely on our phones too heavily and it's too big of a distraction to allow us to sit down and get good deep work done when we need to study. So just put it in another room. Trust me, just throw it away. If you're using your phone as your alarm, as soon as you've woken up, chuck it somewhere else, chuck it in a different room. Don't give it the chance to distract you before we've even started studying. And if you want to go one further, buy an analog alarm clock as well. That way you don't even have to look at your phone until after you've started studying for the morning. This has been probably one of the biggest attributors to my early morning productivity because I don't even have to look at my phone at all. It's great. And it's also kind of nice to wake up to someone's voice on the radio as opposed to that dreaded iPhone alarm or Samsung alarm. As humans, it's pretty safe to say that we're always gonna take the path of least resistance, you know, most of the time. So if we have our phone completely isolated somewhere entirely, all of a sudden our study that's right in front of us ready to go is the path of least resistance. So it allows us to not get distracted as easily. Now this fourth one, getting up earlier, you could probably take it or leave it. Like, yes, getting up earlier does allow you more time to actually study in the morning, but if you're just absolutely exhausted and you know you don't function in the morning, don't wake up early, because that's gonna be more detrimental. So throw all of this advice out the window and just focus on waking up when you're most comfortable and then blocking your time and being organized to study from then on. If you do actually wanna kind of start waking up a little bit earlier, then good on you because I find it really is beneficial to kind of kick-starting your day and allowing you to get more done. If you are struggling to kind of wake up that hour or hour and a half earlier or whatever time you want to get up, a good little tip is to just try and push your alarm back 15 minutes or half an hour or however large a gap you're comfortable doing and see how you feel. Do that for a week and kind of get climatized and get a little adjusted to it. And then once you've done that, you know, pop it back another 15, pop it back another half an hour and go through it again. And you'll find that if your body can actually adjust to the times, then you'll be waking up at eight o'clock, 7.30 before you know it. Cheeky little tip too, waking up and then splashing your face with cold water, as awful as it sounds, actually really helps to just shock your face, shock your eyes, really wake you up and kind of kick you into gear for the day. I mean, it's cold, but it's good. Yeah. Now probably the single biggest thing that you can do to kind of help make it that much easier to study in the morning is to organize the night before. Have everything done, everything ready before you go to bed the night before. That way when you wake up in the morning, there's no friction to anything, you just get up and go. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Have your clothes folded next to the bed ready to go. Have all of your books and all of your work material on the desk laid out open so you can sit down and start. Have your breakfast ready on the breakfast on the dining table, whatever table you've got it on. Know where you're gonna be studying so you know where to put your phone so that you're not in the same room as your phone. And most importantly, know what time you're getting up and what you actually are studying. This way, when you're woken up and you're tired, all you wanna do is just go right back to sleep. You can just let muscle memory take over and you can zombie your way through the house, get ready. And before you know it, you're sitting on your chair all your books open, ready to go. If you found this valuable, make sure to hit a like and subscribe down the bottom. It's a very small yet surprisingly important way to actually support the channel and I really appreciate it. Well, that's my five habits for really improving your productivity for studying effectively in the morning. Feel free to leave a comment down below about how you study, you know, whether you study in the morning at night and maybe a video you'd like me to do next. I've curated a playlist up here somewhere about how to study effectively for exams. I think you'll get a lot out of it. And until next time, See ya.